Welcome back to the program. You're watching Daybreak on Trust TV. Here's a quick reminder. You can watch us on the go by joining our YouTube and Facebook live streams online. Of course, uh, you can also follow us across our social media platforms to catch up with the program on the go and make sure you don't miss out on any of the conversations. Back here in the studio, time for us to take a look at um, what has been uh, an interesting past few days uh, since the sitting of the first uh, the, f uh, the first few sittings of the uh, newly constituted Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria, chaired by the Central Bank Governor uh, Olaimi Cardoso. They've uh, announced and rolled out interventions as well as new uh, guidelines uh, yesterday in Abuja on Tuesday. Uh, let's bring you this report put together by Trust TV's Chamunda Beng on the outcome and the resolution of the Monetary Policy Committee and what this means for Nigeria's economy going forward. Raise the NPR by 400 basis points to 22.75 from 18.75%. The committee's decisions were centered on the current inflationary and exchange rate pressures projected inflation, and rising inflation expectations. Well, as you can imagine, this particular development has elicited mixed reactions from experts, economists, financial uh, analysts, and Nigerians uh, who understand very little about the economy regarding what comes next, whether this is the panacea or perhaps even going to further complicate uh, an already delicate situation. Well, let's talk to someone who understands these difficult waters. Uh, Join us on the program this morning is Professor Mike Obadan. Professor Obadan is an economist, an educationist who has authored many books, uh, and he is also the former, a former Director General of the Nigeria Center for Economic Management and Administration. Uh, Professor. Uh, Ibada Obadan is also a past member of the CBN board and a former member of the Monetary Policy Committee. Uh, Prof, good morning. Thank you most kindly for joining us on Daybreak this morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you. Right. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to get your reaction to this particular development vis-a-vis -vis the current state of the Nigerian economy. What are your thoughts? On the Monetary Policy Committee resolution? Yes, exactly. Uh, well, the Nigerian economy, as of today, is in a stagflationary situation. That is to say, is experiencing low or fragile growth, economic growth, and at the same time, very high inflation, inflation rate. Mm. Uh, which has caused a lot of concerns you know, to Nigerians because of the negative impact on purchasing power, on businesses, and various enterprises. Uh, well, let me say that the Monetary Policy Committee was genuinely concerned about the rising trend escalating inflation you know in the country uh the rising inflation expectations uh the escalating exchange rate you know and among others and so uh we can say that yes the move or the decisions by the central bank yesterday were in the right direction but the magnitude of change of the policy instruments mm. uh, is rather very worrisome. Mm. Uh, for instance, the monetary policy rate, uh, for the first time in Nigeria's economic management history, was increased by 4% mm. from 18.75% mm. to 22.75%. Mm. And secondly, the cash reserve requirements uh, expected to be complied with or met by the deposit money banks was also highly jacked up mm. from 32.5% to 45%. Uh, these are 
this constitutes, for me, a relative overdose mm. you know, of the policy instruments. I agree that there is the need to tackle inflation. But these changes tended to assume that the inflation in the country is purely a monetary, mm. a monetary phenomenon. Right. But which is not, and the governor in the communique did acknowledge that, that there are several non-monetary factors, you know, that drive inflation in Nigeria as of today. One of which is the, you know, infrastructure deficits across the country, uh, exchange rate escalation, which has pass through effect on domestic prices of goods and services. And fiscal deficits of the federal government, which has tended to increase over time. And then, of course, the impact of insecurity all over the country, impact of insecurity, you know, on the production of food, you know, and other goods and services. Also impact on investment, domestic investment and all that. If that is the case, if the bank acknowledges the important role of these factors, then uh, an attempt to rely on monetary policy instruments alone to address the inflation problem uh, would not be the right thing to do. Uh, because what is happening in this case is that monetary policy is being, you know, overburdened to address the inflation problem, whereas there are numerous other factors right. which need to be addressed, you know, uh, to be able to contain Right. The inflationary situation. Right. I, I mean, uh, I, I, I appreciate that you know contextualization of, of what the problems are and what the CBN is trying to do. Yes. Uh, some have said this is just the CBN trying to control what it is in control of, as you did say, and as that communique pointed out, that this is just one variable of so many other variables within the economic setup itself. Yeah. Uh, so if you weigh, you know, the decision in that communique from jacking of the NPR from eighteen. To 22 percent as you said this is quite irregular usually what you have is between uh one point something or maximum you get two percent uh, yeah. increment uh in the npr uh, give me your take on what the impact is likely going to be uh right now knowing what we know about the volatility within the economy itself you mean the impact yes yeah, the impact of the npr the impact not just the npr yeah the combined impact mm. of the monetary policy rate you know hike mm. and the increase mm. sharp increase in the cash reserve mm. requirement right. the expected impact is that if these two policy instruments work as expected the liquidity in the economy or the money supply will be reduced mm. And so the monetary policy instruments are expected to signal to the deposit money banks to do everything to reduce credit creation. Mm. Lending, as it were, by they themselves also hiking lending rates. Mm. And so if lending rates increase, that is not a positive development for the real sector of the economy. It's not a positive development even for government financing. Mm. And it's not a positive development even for the commercial banks themselves. Because when interest rates keep rising, lending rates keep rising, mm. it increases the possibility of increasing non-performing loans. Mm. And so what is likely to happen is that if the policy instruments work as expected, 
by reducing the ability of commercial banks to create credit and invariably reduce liquidity, the impact may be devastating on economic growth. Mm. That's likely to uh, discourage investors. Mm. And you know they will be borrowing, those who borrow from the banks will be doing so at high cost. Mm. And in that case, so debt servicing is going to go up significantly for especially um, businesses, right? Pardon? Uh, debt servicing, yes. That is the expectation. That yeah. is the channel. Mm. When all these, when these instruments are implemented the way they are now to be implemented, re increase cash reserve requirement, that is to say uh, every deposit that the bank you know, receives is now going to keep 45% you know, in the central in bank. The central bank. I do. Mm -hmm. It means the rest is what they can, you know, struggle to lend. Mm -hmm. And yet, we are saying that we need the private sector production to expand so that the growth prospects will be much better. Mm -hmm. So invariably, if it happens, it's likely to negatively impact on economic growth. Hmm. Uh, what will also add to that is the fact that at the present time, um, consumer demand for goods and services has weakened hmm. tremendously. And if that is the case, it means you have a combined effect of two policies hmm. on growth. Uh, increased cost of borrowing money, mm. uh, which will discourage some investors. And then consumer demand is weakening in the sense that because of the high rate of inflation, mm. not many people are able to buy goods and services as before. Mm. The combined effect of that, I fear mm. very strongly, is the possibility of driving the economy into a recession or very low growth situation. Right. So in that case, we may be achieving one goal, reduce inflation mm. at the expense of the other. Mm. The governor, I must concede, uh, did acknowledge this possibility that with the policy instruments, you know, there might be a trade-off mm. between price stability objective, right. if achieved, it could lead to negative impact on economic growth. Mm. But is that desired mm. uh, in the circumstance in which inflation is not purely a monetary phenomenon? Mm. There are many other factors even which the governor even acknowledged. One of them is exchange rate escalation. The, the bank can do something about that one. But at the moment, when the bank is insisting on you know, market determination of the exchange rate, then the problem will be compounded. You know, the exchange rate will be escalating you know, because of limited supply in relation to demand. And if that is the case, when these policy measures are being implemented, it means that one will tend to negate even the expected positive impact mm. of the tightened monetary policy environment. Right, right. And in talking about the expected impact of this, clearly the MPC sees all the positives while acknowledging, uh, you know, the negatives with the negatives and the variables that it is not uh, in charge of. Uh, we talk about inflationary control, inflation control as one of the measures because this is supposed is to address... That is the goal. Yeah, that is the goal, exactly. And of course, there's also the issue of currency stability because the Naira right now is doing really badly. Uh, yeah. And we've seen, um, you know, a rebound of some sort over the past uh, few days. Mm -hmm. He did talk about the BDCs and extensively we get to ex expand that also. But do you think, I mean... Uh, this is like largely going to be counterproductive after everything is said and done. Largely because of the fact that the monetary aspect is just one aspect 
of a myriad of challenges yeah. that is inundating the economy at this moment? It's, it's likely, mm. in light of what I have just said, mm. because what is happening now is that financial conditions are tightening. Mm. And that means that lending rates, you know, are very likely to rise mm. if the commercial banks respond. Mm. Uh -huh. And if that is the case, we, you know, and I believe they will respond. Mm. Uh -huh. they, they are only reluctant to respond to reduction in interest rates. Mm. Uh, but when you increase the monetary policy rate, you know, the asymmetric relationship plays out. Mm. You find the commercial banks quickly adjusting the rates. Mm. So invariably, what one would expect mm. is that the factors which the central bank can control, mm. it should also work on them. For me, mm. central bank can control the escalation you know, of exchange rate. Uh, but to the extent that the bank insists that it's uh, mm. market determination and you know, willing buyer, willing seller approach, which is market, you know, a buyer and seller for an exchange negotiate and agree. If that continues, then definitely is going to negate whatever gains that are likely to be obtained by tightening the monetary policy instruments. Mm. Mm. So the impacts, you know, are likely to play out. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the CBN governor, while explaining uh, some of these points, said, you know, this is all evidence based. Uh, this aggressive move is evidence-based. They've seen reason why they should go in this particular direction. Um, I mean, you've said that there is a sense that this might be an overdose. Some, might, yeah. some say it might be an overkill uh, and it could be counterproductive. But let's go down history, uh, memory lane, and remember, we've been here before several times in over the past three, four, five decades uh, in this country. When you were, you know, uh, a member of the MPC, give me a sense of what goes into these recommendations and that end up becoming a part of the communique. We've, we've had to you know, overcome hurdles like this before. We've had to survive rece recession recently uh, two or three times between 2016 and 2021 when the pandemic uh, hit. Mm. Give me a sense of you know, you know, some of these textbook approach to addressing these you know, economic uh, volatile situations. Well, uh, the committee, invariably to cognizance of the economic realities. Uh, the data on economic trends, mm. financial conditions, uh, gross domestic product. Mm. Uh, during recession, Nigeria had two recessions in the last nine years or so. In, in such a period of recession, mm. there is the desire for the bank to support economic growth. And so, you know, hawkishness mm. in monetary policy instruments will tend to be ruled out. Mm. In fact, in other economies, in such situations, mm. the monetary policy instruments mm. is reduced. Right, right. Like mm. happened during COVID-19 mm. in the advanced mm. economies. Mm. Interest rates continued well, yeah, to go down. To go down. Right. Uh -huh. But in Nigeria's case, I think we were just able to reduce the monetary policy rate once. Mm. Uh -huh. But we, that's because the inflation rate was not comfortable. And so there was the need to focus on you know, controlling inflation and at the same time also support economic growth. Mm. And I will say this that. Uh, the stance as at the moment it seems to be that uh, economic growth is not important to the central bank. Mm. Uh, but that, that may not be correct. You, 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 th you think it's missing the bigger picture here? Yeah, that was, that's what it seems. Mm. You know, because it, let me tell you this, that there is virtually no economy that does not support where the central bank does not support economic growth. Mm. Uh, even the United States Monetary Policy Committee mm. 
one of the two primary objectives is to ensure price stability and the other one is to generate employment and you don't generate employment unless the economy is growing and is creating jobs oh. so even the united states has a focus on growth perhaps yeah. indirectly there needs to be a balance yes <laughs> as it were right there, there yeah. needs to be a balance oh. uh, but i i understand the concern oh. of the current team in the central bank oh. uh the you know let's focus on you know our primary mandate but i will say that to the extent that the fiscal authorities are not really complementing the efforts of the central bank as desired. Mm. So central bank cannot completely take its eyes away from supporting growth. Mm. It can do, still do selective development finance interventions, mm. you know, providing access to pri productive private sector enterprises mm. to access cheap credit, cheap credit right. that is how it can support right. you know economic growth yeah and this is obviously going to tighten and slow down some of these um uh, points that you've just made right now if you're yeah. trying to create jobs if you're trying to stimulate the economy you know some of these um indices are supposed to be in favor of all of these things however this suggests that um you know while we're trying to control inflation we're trying to stabilize the naira we're risking a variety of other issues that are equally yeah. important yeah. towards um, economic uh, prosperity uh, and development. But give me, a, give me your take on the short and long-term effect here, because apparently this is the direction of the Apex Bank, yeah. and we have to just deal with the consequences uh, of it. But give me your projection as to what may be the short and long-term effect of this. And is there a chance that we can weather this storm of economic slowdown, financial tightening, and, and things like that, and whether there's a possibility of it uh, being a net positive move in the near future. Well, it, let me say this straight away that uh, the issue of whether there's possibility of getting a balance, I would say yes. Uh, in the situation of stagflation, that the country currently experiences. Mm. If the federal government, the government had a fiscal muzzle, fiscal muzzle, that is to say, is able to generate enough re revenue, Naira revenue, to finance mm. its various you know, development programs, mm. budget and development programs, then in such a situation, we can rely on the government to support growth, provide all the incentives, mm. fiscal incentives, and to support economic growth, mm. while the central bank may wish to concentrate primary on its primary you know, mandate right. of growth. Mm. So in such a situation, we can have a balance. While central bank is fighting inflation on the one hand with all the instruments it has, the government is also using fiscal policies mm. to promote growth. Mm. So the damage of the monetary policy tightening may be less you know, on growth. Mm. But we all know that at the present time, government is a fiscal uh, capacity is rather limited. Right. Even with the removal of subsidy and the floating of the naira right through which the government seems to benefit significantly the more the rate depreciates the more naira revenue it gets from mm. exports of right. oil in particular right. then subsidy you don't pay subsidy again but is that really so as of today because the various indications even from the International Monetary Fund, is that the federal government is paying subsidy because of the escalation of the exchange rate and the fact that all the petroleum products 
consumed in Nigeria are imported because of the escalating exchange rates and the fact that global inflation has really not moderated to the extent to which those countries desire, that the landing cost mm. of fuel probably is far higher than what right. you know, we are, consumers are paying. And if that is the case, mm. it means then that part of the gains from subsidy you know, may now be used invariably mm. for also to subsidize indirectly. Right. So invariably, a balance could be struck if government has adequate fiscal muscle mm. or fiscal capacity. Mm. Uh, you said the short and long-term effects. Well, I've already referred to them you know, directly and indirectly. In the short term, we expect the lending rates of commercial banks to increase. Mm. If that one happens, then it will limit the ability of private sector enterprises, you know, to borrow for production. You know, and they will also be a bit skeptical because if the interest rates are rising and they are borrowing at very high cost, it means they'll be producing at very high cost. Mm. If they are producing at very high cost, goods and services prices may rise. Right. That one may negate the, the whole, positive yeah. effect of the policies. Mm. So in the short term, that is expected. And also, because the rates have jacked up, government, government's cost of borrowing may increase. Already, the government has been you know, borrowing through treasury bills mm. at very high rates sometimes you know near 20 percent or thereabout mm. that may also be the case in, in this case well let me say this also that um like i said the non-performing loans of the commercial banks may increase because much higher lending rates right. reduces the ability of borrowers to repay the loans right and so there's one, going to be a lot of defaults. Yes, yeah. a lot of defaults. Yeah. And that one can affect the financial stability indicators yeah. you know, of the commercial banks. Yeah. And not least, even in the short term, is the impact on the stock market. Right. You know, for some time, until maybe a few weeks ago, the stock market appeared to be in a boom. Yeah. You know, prices were rising, you know, it's possible that there were manipulations and so on. Mm. But you see, interest rates have a negative relationship or inverse relationship with stock market prices. And so if general interest rates continue to trend upwards, it's likely to reduce prices in the stock market. And that one invariably might result in losses to investors and all that. Mm -hmm. So in the long term, the net impact is likely to be on growth, economic growth. Mm -hmm. And in the long term, the bank, central bank, may achieve its objectives. But with the analysis I've done, mm -hmm. you know that prices of goods and services may even rise. Right. Then you find that the possibility of reducing inflation significantly is relatively, you know, moderated, right. you know, as it were. To put it simply to our viewers, we may miss the target. At the, at the, to put it simply, we may miss the target. The CBN may actually miss the target. There is uh, a possibility. Right, right. I'm not sure yeah. the central bank's optimism is such that it expects, you know, to achieve uh, a reduction in the inflation rate from 29.9% mm. to 21%. Mm. That is its target for mm. this year. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. But with the coalition of various factors at play, the balance of probability may be that the net effect you know, on inflation of the various policies mm. might not be strong. Yeah. And in talking about um, the pains uh, versus the gains from this um, 
new uh, direction. Uh, obviously, we're talking about businesses likely shutting down because they can't stay afloat. People losing their jobs. Particularly micro and small businesses. Businesses, right, exactly. Uh, give me your take on whether you think there's an alignment with what the CBN is currently doing and what the Tinubu administration is trying to achieve with all its economic reforms. Do you think that there's an, al an alignment here? And n n not quite. The Tinubu administration actually desires very low interest rates. Mm. You know, they've said it publicly, president, and so on. And justifiably so, to be able to promote high rates of inclusive growth that can reduce, you know, unemployment, you know, and reduce poverty. The, the jacking of such rates will not achieve that one. It's not likely to achieve that one. So. Yes, the Tinubu administration, government, would like a stable you know, financial system, would like inflation to be reduced. But I'm not sure that the administration will want a situation that inflation is reduced and growth you know, is adversely impacted mm -hmm. to the extent that we'll be fearing possible trend towards a recession you know, of the economy. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about the whole Nara dollar exchange saga yeah. that has uh, caught the imagination of the country over the past few weeks. We've seen the Nara plummet and continued to plummet uh, went down as low as 1,900 Nara plus to the dollar, even though we've seen <clears throat> a rebound over the past uh, few days. Yeah. Uh, we also understand that the CBN has announced a decision to distribute $20,000 to each of the eligible build exchange operators uh, across the country. It is also trying to streamline some of their operations through licensing and you know, setting some parameters to um, address some of the irregularities in the industry. What is your take on the CBN's approach to address this volatility that may or may not be a factor of some sort of um, uh, liberalization of, uh, of our foreign exchange market? Let me say this, that uh, liberalization of the foreign exchange market, market determination of the exchange rate is good where certain conditions are fulfilled. Uh, one of which will be a st very strong balance of payments position strong external results position in which and the citizens appetite for importation of goods and services is moderated and when you do that and the export base is very robust such that export earnings you know come in and boost foreign exchange reserves uh, which can be used you know, to support, you know, the market. But if those conditions are not there, and you say the market should determine the exchange rate, what will happen is what we are getting now, a situation whereby the exchange rate continues to escalate because there are economic agents, uh, be they speculators, uh, institutions or even banks mm. that manipulate the market mm. with impunity mm. and they manipulate the market and keep jacking up the exchange rate by the actions mm. so under such circumstances normally mm. you know the, it's clear that the market is imperfect even the governor in his uh, you know communicate briefing alluded to that various distortions mm. you know and uh, he distractions talked, yeah the he market. he talked about 26 billion dollars uh you know from unknown sources passing through binance which is a crypto uh exchange uh, platform yes. uh in just one year and we talk about illicit financial flows and how to curb it do you think this 
new uh, normal, which is the cryptocurrency space. Uh, that, do, you, do you get a sense that the CBN is, um, you know, attuning and adapting very well to, you know, the shock that cryptocurrency, um, you know, is sending uh, through the financial system? I think they are trying to adopt the, the challenges posed by cryptocurrencies uh, through their various institutions have been well known. And that was the reason why the previous management of the central bank was not receptive of cryptocurrencies. The destabilization of the financial system and then the foreign exchange market that could occur. And so I think this new team is also appreciating that one. And that's why it brought out the issue of Binance and then the amount of money that went through. But if the management team you know, believes that it can put in place regulations, control measures that are effective, then it can go ahead and tolerate them. Mm. Otherwise, you know, it should not be tolerated. What, does, what does your gut feeling uh, tell you? That. On, on, on what to do about, you know, this, uh, this new frontier. Yeah. No, I, I think the bank should be allowed to implement whatever measures that it has come up with in relation to checking the possible nefarious activities of these cryptocurrencies mm. groups and mm. so on. Mm. And if uh, it, you know, it will be an experiment, mm. um, they've just come on board. And if over time they find that, you know, these, the activities of these uh, companies are not in the interest of the economy, I believe they will do the needful mm. and might have to find a way to stop them. Mm. The BDCs that you mentioned are being returned. Happily, the governor mentioned in his address yesterday that there were, in the past, serious abuses connected to the Bureau de Change operators. It was actually because of those abuses that the previous management of the central bank, mm. you know, excluded the BDCs from accessing official foreign exchange. Mm. They were not banned because they had licenses, mm. but they were not, you know, allowed to access official foreign exchange mm. because their activities we are found to be injurious mm. to the economic health of the country. The activities tended to sabotage the monetary policy of the central bank in the sense that they were expected to you know, buy foreign currency from the central bank at a particular price as they were considered as part of the official foreign exchange market. Mm. And then they were to sell at a margin. But for quite some time, it became clear that they were not doing that. Mm. And rather than buy and sell at the expected margin and then help the central bank to stabilize the Naira, then they were buying from the central bank and selling in the parallel market. Mm. In other words, by their activities, they had become part of the parallel market mm -hmm. and not part of the official market right. uh, aimed or designed to stabilize the Naira and the financial system. Leading so invariably, mm -hmm. if the new administration believes that it's in a position to effectively checkmate the activities mm -hmm. of BDCs and that they will not do the round tripping for which they were barred from accessing the foreign exchange, then they could go ahead with them. Mm. 
otherwise you know it may not be advisable it might we might be returning to the situation that existed you know before mm. it means central bank must have the capacity to effectively monitor the activities perhaps the new guidelines mm. uh, which have been released by the central bank you know may be may be helpful mm. in checking the activities mm. but central bank management will be on the alert with respect to the activities mm. of BDCs. Yeah, uh, and that is what uh, indeed many Nigerians expect from this one. Now, uh, going back to the MPC uh, uh, meeting itself, it, hap it roughly happens eight times in a year? Or once six every... Six times. Six times. Yes. Okay, six times. <coughs> so, uh, likely once every six, eight months? Yeah, six, uh, uh, eight two, weeks? Two, 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 two months. Two, two months. So, yes. uh, so eight weeks, uh, give or take. Uh, give me a sense of what may likely happen from the analysis and from the reaction uh, we've been, uh, you know, getting from experts like yourself. Uh, what do you think will happen next time they meet? Uh, <laughs> you know, given all the projections about, you know, the stagnation within the economy yeah. and what the likely impact is going to be. Do you think we're going to see a, 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 a reversal of this increment? What is likely going to happen in your view? Yeah. Well, let me say that in light of the forces currently at play, uh, two months, no, actually one month, mm. because they are, they've indicated that they will meet in March, mm, yeah. which means four weeks. Mm. That definitely will not, that period is not enough for to the, gauge. Yes, to mm. gauge or assess. Mm the positive or negative effect of the current policy stance in, in, a, in an appropriate way. And so what is likely to happen is that given the resoluteness mm. of the current team to fight inflation and their belief that hiking interest rates should do the work, you know, reduce inflation, at the next meeting, the team is likely to maintain, you know, the current monetary policy stance. Mm. Uh, I believe that they will want, you know, to wait and allow the measures to play out or take effect so that they'll be able to assess in an objective way, you know, the impact. Mm. So it's not likely that they will increase, you know, definitely not reducing the monetary policy rate or the CRR. Mm. If I were in the yeah. team, yeah. that's what I would suggest mm. that let's watch the situation and how the effects play out. And then we get a robust assessment, mm. perhaps at the meeting that we follow the March, you know, meeting. Mm. Then they can take you know, good and uh, fairly objective mm. decisions. You think it will be premature if they decide to uh, change course by March? Yeah, it will be very premature. Mm. It, it, <clears throat> they, ca they definitely can't reduce mm. the monetary policy rate mm. to the extent that the inflation rate is still very high. Mm. We don't even know what the February figure might mm. be. Given the existing situation, it might still be a little higher because prices are still go going up. Mm. Uh -huh. And if that is the case, they would be well advised to watch the situation, monitor, and then check what is happening in the banks. Mm. Uh, have interest rates increased as expected, lending rates. Mm. Uh -huh. And if that is the case, what is the effect of that? on investors, you know, enterprises, and so on. Mm. So they, they'll be able to take a decision, let's say, in the medium term, yeah. as to whether to increase further. Uh -huh. But if the assessment shows that the measures are not working as expected, inflation is not trending downwards as expected, then and they continue to hike the rates 
uh, that that one will be a bit questionable. Right. Okay. Um, let's factor in the global economy because the slowdown is also a global one. Um, what do you make of how the global economy is trying to um, adjust to the Russia-Ukraine war, which has um, caused quite the disruption to the uh, supply chain? Um, yeah. You know, of, of you know, not just uh, food commodities like wheat, for instance, but also caused some sort of energy crisis uh, yeah. over the past few years because of you know the shortage of gas uh, supply. Even though most economists say Nigeria should have capitalized uh, on that, but the infrastructure is not necessarily there uh, to to meet uh, global demands. But let's just suppose what is happening to the global economy and how Nigeria is also uh, aligning itself with some of those changes and how uh, things will likely change, especially as we consider all these uh, new interventions by the CBN? Well, the, the interventions, particularly those aimed at uh, perhaps greater collaboration with the fiscal authority, because the fiscal authority is part of the problem of the central bank. and. If the fiscal authority decides to appreciate the fact that their actions are causing problems for the monetary authority, so that they make the monetary authority less subservient mm. to the fiscal authority, then definitely adjustments can take place. Uh, CBN actions can yield Desire, move in the, the right direction in terms of outcomes mm. and so on. But otherwise, you know, CBN may continue to struggle mm. in terms of achieving, you know, its mandate. Yeah. Uh, the CBN has also announced that they will be collaborating more with the enforcement agencies, uh, which is good because there is a lot of manipulation and malfeasance, mm. you know, in the financial system and the foreign exchange market. Mm. Uh, so invariably, most of the measures they are rolling out are in the right direction. Right. But in terms of the way Nigeria economy is adjusting, Nigeria economy is quite different from many other global economies. Uh, you talk about global inflation, the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war. It raised inflation level initially because of shortage of petroleum products, you know, agricultural products and so on. But inflation has been trending downwards in those economies. Whereas inflation in Nigeria has continued to trend upwards. What that one means is that those economies have the capacity mm -hmm. to adjust to the shocks occasioned by the Russia-Ukraine war. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they are, impl they are implementing their policies also hiked rates, mm -hmm. but they are thinking of moderating the rates now mm -hmm. because the inflation rate is moving in most of these economies towards their long-term targets mm. or objectives. But because of the nature of the Nigerian economy, with so much distortions, so much imperfections and manipulations, mm. we are not able to adjust. And most of those countries, those that have the capacity to Produce many of them have the capacity to produce agricultural products. Mm. They, they started producing yeah. and seeking alternatives. Mm. You know, energy. The U.S. invariably started, you know, depleting its reserves right. and also escalating production of shale oil and so on. Right. So invariably, those economies, because they have generally been better managed are able to adjust to the shocks occasioned by a number of geopolitical tensions, including the Russia-Ukraine war. Very interestingly, sometimes Nigeria has a way of defying 
textbook conventional measures <laughs> they usually uh, are supposed to address some of these uh, situations. There's always something peculiar about yeah. addressing some of these challenges, whether it's economic, <coughs> political, or social yeah. uh, in this country. But let's hope for the best uh, as we uh, experience uh, the impact that this new uh, direction is going to take us in. We're going to have to anchor the conversation here, Prof. Thank you most kindly for your expert analysis. We really do appreciate your insight and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very uh, on much, my good friend. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. We have been speaking to Professor Mike Obadan, who is a professor of economy and, of course, is an educationist who has authored many books. He was the former director general of the Nigeria Center for Economic Management and Administration, Ibadan, and a past member of the CBN board and former member of the Monetary Policy Committee. All right, you're watching Daybreak on Trust TV. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the front pages of some select national dailies this morning as uh, we bring you up to speed with the stories making the headlines. Newspaper review is coming up next. Back to take a look at what the papers are offering this morning, this beautiful Wednesday uh, morning, February 28, 2024. Let's start with a look at the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper for today. Uh, from the very top, CBN resumes sale of dollars to BDCs, raise interest rates to 22.75%, something that we just uh, discussed to great detail. Uh, more on that on page three. Mixed reaction trail Tinubu's approval of Oronsai, Oronsai report. Page 22 has more on that uh, report and what it means uh, going forward. Meningitis kills 20 students in Yobe. Uh, uh, three local governments affected and we understand that the state government is working around the clock to address uh, the gaps. I mean, this is the season of it uh, because of the heat uh, you can imagine, Yobi is one of the hottest states uh, in the country this time of the year. The big story is talking about the cost of living crisis that led to the NLC nationwide protests as the labor union suspends the second day of protest. Counter rally in Abuja. Police hold demonstrators in Meduguri. Lagos CP gives water, biscuits to protesters. Yeah, it's a rather unusual but welcome development to see that... Um, there's always going to be solidarity beyond just the fact that um, they are police officers, others are civil servants and protesters at the end of it all, we're human beings and uh, more importantly, we're Nigerians uh, who should share the same goal of uh, wanting prosperity for our country. So it's, uh, it's actually a welcome development uh, seeing that video trend online. More on that story on page four. Uh, you can see the picture there from uh, yesterday's protest at the National Assembly where the march uh, culminated with the leadership of the NLC uh, presenting their demands once again to uh, representatives of um, the National Assembly. Army court, Army court marshals, one officer, 16 soldiers over gun running in Joss. Um, and this just once again re-emphasizes the call to really sanitize our security architecture and to rid it of all the moles, all the uh, people who are undermining uh, the work of the Nigerian military and other security agencies alike. Because um, you have insiders or people who are culpable and who are working at the heart of our security uh, agencies. Five killed, 26 rescued in Onicha collapsed building. Uh, such a sad uh, development uh, in Onicha yesterday. Police arrests wanted kidnap Kingping in Nasara. I must say the police has been working overtime over the past few days. Uh, some of the arrests, some of the rescues, uh, quite commendable. Keep up the good work. Let's take a look at the front page of the Punch newspaper for today. This is what, is, what it looks like. Interest rate hike, private sector, economists foresee fresh job losses, recession. Uh, CBN, uh, of course, has decided to go down this particular path, uh, saying that this is the best course of action. Uh, do some further reading uh, on the Punch newspaper for today to find out more about that story. 
50th uh, anniversary of the Punch newspaper. Photo exhibition opens today. Shoyinka delivers lecture on Thursday. And you must say that um, Punch being one of the foremost leading Nigerian national dailies uh, has come a long way and still remains not just vibrant, but um, ably positioned to continue to give credible news information and, of course, uh, has innovated in this particular industry. So this week, as it marks its 50th anniversary, a lot of events lined up to commemorate uh, what has been a tremendously uh, impacting journey for the Punch newspaper. But the big story on the front page of the Punch newspaper is about presidency alleging political agenda as protests hit states. No unanimity in protests. Some people leveraging current situation for political gains, says presidential aide. You know, the politicization of some of these developments uh, leaves much to be desired. It always means that um, you know what is actually happening is um, you know not true. But people who are politically not aligned with the current administration, I believe PDP, APC, Labour Party, NMPP. YPP, everybody can agree that there's hardship in the land. If we're in concession, if there's concession about that, um, why don't we think that the protests are organic? Uh, police share biscuits, water at Lagos protests. NLC urges Tinubu to end extreme hardship and food crisis. And you can see some of the pictures there from Abuja, from Lagos, and Port Harcourt. In other news, federal government completes $700 million gas pipeline in March after um, eight years. Three bodies recovered, 11 rescued as Lagos boat capsizes. That's why I never liked boats. I never even liked you know, a large body of water, but um, all of this signposts the need for safety measures uh, all the time on our waterways. Senate Pro Ajakuta steel over $496 million payment. More on that on page 21 of the Punch newspaper for today. The Guardian is up next. So let's take a look at the front page of the Guardian newspaper for today. And uh, well, this is News Direct. Uh, let's take News, News Direct anyway. Um, NLC suspends protests, issues 14 days ultimatum to federal government uh, to meet demands. Um, this is, of course, actually it's a seven-day extension to the 14 days ultimatum that they've already issued. Uh, so they're extending it further by seven days. Meningitis uh, hits Yobe. 20 students uh, reportedly die uh, from that uh, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate situation. How 10 trillion naira intervention funds by previous administrations damaged Nigeria's economy. Okay. Uh, a CBN raises benchmark interest rate to record 22.75%. Forensic analysis fingers $2.4 billion false FX claims. You talk about institutionalizing irregularity this is the height of it and i must say one way or the other we have to find a way to prosecute these um, cases to serve as a deterrent police army fall kidnap attempt in casino rescue 10 victims it was quite a gallant um you know encounter if you get uh, to the details of that um story All right, let's uh, take a look at uh, one newspaper before we go. The Nation is up next. NLC protesters uh, in peaceful march over painful reforms. Workers, right president, protests suspended. Senate to streamline CBN's overdraft to federal government. Will Lagos red line change transportation gain? Uh, I think this is an editorial on the Nation newspaper. I do like what is happening in Lagos, especially with regards to uh, sanitizing um, the public transportation system, for instance. Uh, FCT safe for investments. WK tells UK Edo Igodalo hopeful of victory. Economy will get better 
Tinubu assures Nigerian Speaker Abbas urges patience with government. Haven't we been patient enough? We need to be rewarded for all the patience so far. This was uh, the president, uh, along flanked by the chief of staff, as well as uh, uh, other members. Uh, or rather, I, I can see Adams Oshomele there. I can also see the Minister of Interior uh, during the, I think, the launch uh, of. Um, I think it's a report. Uh, uh, as you can see in a book form uh, at the State House yesterday. And finally, borrowers from banks to pay more because the interest rates now has been hiked from 18% to 22.75%. Imagine that. Okay, uh, we're back in the studio with Mr. Ben Sherman, former director of news at The Voice of Nigeria to help us analyze. Uh, some of the big stories from today. As always, Mr. Ben Sherman is looking regal and ready to go. Good morning, Mr. Ben Sherman. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Sunday is uh, taking a sick leave today. So that explains the reason why he's not here. So that I don't ask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm anticipating the question, so I, I had to ask already. Okay. Um, okay, where do we start from? Let's start with the protest yesterday. Um, wasn't particularly as big as we expected it. But it's something that has been ongoing for the past two weeks. And yesterday, across the country, we saw people come out again, Nigerian workers, to drive home the same message. Enough is enough. We need soccer now. Um, and apparently, after all is been said and done, they decided to review their next step. And they said, OK, we're going to call it off. The two-day protest is only going to uh, end uh, with that one-day protest because they think it's been successful. What is your take on the state of affairs and what this whole situation is telling you about um, what is happening in this country? Yeah, you see, when you talk of the state of affairs, hunger is still around. People looking so sad in the streets, it's so palpable, you can see them. So that's the state of affairs. And they tell you we are protesting against hunger. And in protesting against hunger, they're also making it, shouting it very loud by way of action that government should do something. And um, when people say it's not that successful, well, I don't know what uh, that successful means, but when you look at it, TUC, mm -hmm also decided to pull out. Mm. And if that, ha that had been a kind of a joint force, mm. it would have been a great, it would have been of a greater magnitude. Mm. But all the same, they made the point, and even when negotiations were it, 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 up to late hours of Monday, well, Labour still had to say, look, Nigerians, come, come out. And um, it's like a give and take, okay, government will still go out for one day. The other day, we'll give it for you to, to do some uh, rethinking. Mm. And uh, I could see that the photos are all over. But uh, my, my, my worry is um, hoping that the policemen mm. in Lagos will not be dealt with. Mm. Because you could see one almost playing the role of a, a hero, mm. uh, standing on, on, on uh, some open vans and sharing mm. a pure water to protesters. Mm. Uh, some of our zealous security men would just say, that wasn't, not, uh, that wasn't your, your, your calling. Mm. You ought not to have done so. But it did so show solidarity, didn't, didn't it? Uh, yeah, we've, it seen, we've seen this happen elsewhere. Say, for instance, during the Arab Spring or some other um, public protest where police officers say, listen, we understand what you're doing uh, and, and we're here to you know, echo that voice. I mean, this is surely a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good thing, but if you draw a kind of a comparison with the Arab Spring, mm. look at the way it started. Yes, um, a graduate, uh, Abu Azizi, mm. um, was just selling vegetable, and uh, the policeman actually crushed his wares mm. and uh, threw them away and said, look, I'm a graduate. Mm. Say to heck, mm. what, is, what is it about the graduate? Is this the job you do? Then the guy just bought petrol. Mm spill it over himself and set himself alight and died. And that was responsible for the Arab Spring. 
But that of Nigeria is actually very, very peaceful. Mm. If you draw a kind of a comparison, mm. the police use a force in the case of Algeria, mm. as the case of uh, Abu Azizi. Mm. Now you compare that with, um, uh, with Nigeria here, they are giving pure water. But my worry is, yes, it could be peaceful, the security men, Mm. If it turns out to be good, it's also, also going to reflect on their salaries. Mm. But um, my worry is for them coming out in uniform and sharing the... Mm. It's like government, uh, they're telling government, we are with these protesters, mm. uh, uh, kind of. Mm. If they had uh, wanted, you could just keep this uh, water in some jelly can, uh, in some uh, open I mean, spaces. You just pick and pass without uh, uh, I, I you think, I think it's. I think it's good PR for uh, for the Nigeria police. I think it has brought them okay. some sort of uh, public so support. Let's uh, wait, especially let's, so let's wait for the next one week. If there is no query anywhere, <laughs> we'll convene here next uh, I think, Wednesday. I think. I think the, uh, it was uh, green lighted by Oga at the top, probably. Okay. <laughs> before, before no, I happened. wish honestly. Mm. I I yeah. wish that mm. it, it, it yeah. was so. Yeah. But. Um, I, I do know of a, a police officer who was DPO, who would rather negotiate with people, brought all tribal associations, mm. their leadership, and said, look at the role here. See how many of your people are engaged. You see your tribe, see how many are. I'm not here to imprison your people. But can you go back as tribal unions and begin to talk to your people? You didn't come to Lagos mm. to, to destroy your lives or disgrace your tribe or disgrace your, your parents. And for that reason, that area started getting low, very low crime rate, a kind of. And the way the community started giving this police officer some gifts, mm. some awards, of course, some people were annoyed somewhere mm. that that was beyond his um, uh, capacity. Right. That, but, that, that's Nigeria yeah. for you. Yeah. But it, okay, in talking about the protests, right, um, the NLC National Executive Council met late uh, yesterday to review their position and they decided to call it off, extended their ultimatum to the federal government. Uh, there were so many Nigerians who didn't agree with uh, the protest in the first place because they say things are hard already, um, protesting is only going to um, halt economic activities and they don't believe that this is the way uh, to go forward. But what do you make of the NLC's you know, extension of the ultimatum? And also saying that, listen, we're giving the, the, the government room to negotiate further on our demands uh, for Nigerians. Yeah, if government is saying, look, why don't you suspend this? Or even within the labor itself, the, 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 the very top um, uh, members just feel like, oh, okay, we've made a point. Let's give the government a kind of a breathing space uh, to see what uh, steps they will take in view of what they've been uh, uh, saying they would do, even though continuously and incessantly, government will always uh, promise and not to uh, fulfill uh, as, as, as agreed. Uh, so I, I think I'll give it to NLC, I'll give it to government. If government says, look, Stop this. One day is okay. Let's see what we can do. You now say, okay, we're going to stop it, but we'll come some days again to give you some uh, some some grace. Uh, so, uh, it's not as if government, to my thinking, is 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 happily unleashing terror of uh, of um, hunger on Nigerians. No, it's not a deliberate act. But a child must always cry at home that. The father should give or do something, mm -hmm. no matter what. So I put the the, the place of of, of, of uh, the father of the man uh, of the house as the government and the child in the house as labor. So there has to be that consistent um, uh, demand and supply. Labor would demand is mm -hmm. the duty of government to supply, but also in terms of reasonability, labor will look at it and say, okay, we've seen the purchasing power, we've seen the uh, the financial muscle of our parents. What do we do? Mm -hmm. uh, it's also for the parents to now say, look, my child, you know this economy very well. You know inflows. You know how many uh, uh, companies are not working. And we are just simply striving. And like they're saying, look, oh, uh, the last uh, regimes, even though we are not told which regimes mm -hmm. are responsible for these wars, yeah, according to Cardoso. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I, I think that the blame game should not be the issue now. Uh, instead of just saying, look, we are doing this. 
Don't even tell us we are going to do. Tell us we are doing this. Yeah. And we tell us, look, we are going to, sh we are sharing this. Uh, look at the example in, in Zulum. Mm -hmm. One begins to wonder, what really, where is Zulum getting his own money? See what, how he's given palliatives here and there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they all are over the place. But when you look at some other states, what Zulum, you look at around 1.5 5 billion shared when indeed at the federal level uh, look at um, um, the minister of humanitarian or, or what is it now mm. better do yeah. she was still battling with 500 and something uh, million not billion yeah. for a state zulum was and is sharing 1.5 billion yeah. we're talking of a state uh, a federal government to, uh, sharing in cross river state lagos ogun and ondo about five states yeah. Just that meager, I'll call it meager amount, uh, when you compare it with what Zulum alone in Borno is doing, it's good omen that is coming from, I, I think that in terms of peer review mechanism, uh, truly, they should, they should look at what Zulum is doing. Uh, where is he getting this money? And uh, if you look at I don't how think much... A, I, I don't think it's, about, it's much about where the money is coming from, it's about the, the will to do it. Exactly. I think it's, it's a question of it's, it's a question just of like will. some people just say he, he's being given some special funds to, to do what he is doing. When indeed many other states down south, Niger Delta, they receive far above what Borno government is receiving. Okay. Well, what are we seeing? Mm. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the uh, situation with the Orange report. Uh, mixed reactions have trailed uh, the pronouncement by the general administration to implement it. Some of these uh, agencies will be gone. Some of them will be scrapped. Um, just want to get your quick reaction to to this whole conversation. Or as I report. Uh, honestly, I weep right inside me. I know the energy when Voice of Nigeria was created in 1990, excised from uh, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. It was the external arm of, 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 of the broadcasting in Nigeria, for Nigeria, for example. We were the first recruits to, to run that, mm. and we know the energy some of us put. I don't need to, to begin to count here. Mm. Now we're going to subsume all those things, and uh, when you say workforce will not be lost, jobs will not be lost, mm. I think it, it should, that is just a kind of a political uh, statement. If you have two DGs, mm. DG Evers and DG Vaughan, are you saying job loss will not be there? If you have two directors of news, directors of engineering, personnel, are you saying that uh, all those things will still be there? You have two directors, same equal, some, fu same functions. Uh, so I think it's political uh, mm. thing, uh, so to speak. Mm. Mm. Uh, but in doing all of this, I don't know uh, that APC that was always condemning uh, PDP will now see a uh, good thing from PDP. Mm -hmm. Steve Orasanya uh, report and begin to to implement. Well, so but that, I think in terms of in terms of um, um, uh, needs assessment, mm -hmm. you must have done your assessment. Is there a need to do this? Mm -hmm. And if you did that, what is also the impact of what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. If you want a mobile small uh, workforce, just like when there was coronavirus. Mm -hmm. You could see that assistant director, deputy direct, directors, and directors general, they all were the ones uh, working, except for uh, technical stuff that uh, you can't just do without. Mm. The workforce became so few and work was efficient. Some people were then saying, so this, it means this other group could, uh, could, could go. Mm. So it says a lot in terms of service delivery. It's really not about the population. But again, government is sometimes, not just sometimes, you also have to take care of the welfare of the people. In right. view of what you have in Chapter Two of the Nigerian Constitution, the directing principle of Nigerian government: welfareism, security, living in peace, education, and all that. Health-wise, you must ensure the wellness right. of, uh, of Nigerians. Okay. But are we seeing this wellness? Right. Uh, that's a, that's a question that uh, remains unanswered at the moment. Uh, let's talk about the security situation. The Nigerian Army has court-martialed one officer, sixteen soldiers over gun running in Jos, Plachi State. Um, just weeks ago, the governor was talking about how people within the military are aiding and abating the insecurity in the state. This justifies that statement. Um, what do you make of it? Honestly, before I even come to that, just in case we will mention this one, 
Remember in the same plateau where some people connived and kidnapped Reverend Father mm. uh, of Saint uh, Vincent de Paul. Mm. Kidnapped Reverend Fathers, mm. and they turned out to be members of that inner circle mm. of, of the church that mm. became the suspect. See, that, that is the really the real meaning of Judas mm. in a system. Mm. Uh, so um, those people should face the full scale of the war. Mm. Now you go back to the issue um, uh, when people are being court martial. Plateau crisis is lingering on on, on ending mm. now. Suspects are on ground. They've been nabbed. They have been tried. What is the issue? Gun running. I mean, bullets. You have been given these things in custody of Nigeria for Nigerians to protect Nigerians, but you are now selling it to the bad guys to mm. kill innocent people. What is it all about? Money. What is it all about? Your own selfish interest is criminality. And good a thing that uh, the GOC Tad Makana is in, in mm. Jaws, uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, is, is, is doing a nice job. Mm. I think bad eggs must always be rooted out so that they don't contaminate others. Mm. If a finger touches kerosene, if you don't clean it, mm. if you don't wash it, it spills all over. And mm. you dip it inside food, that food is, per, is spoiled. Mm. So Nigeria, the, if, if we get some of these uh, roots, uh, uh, when we're talking of illegal arms coming because of the in insecurity in uh, Libya, according to uh, former President Buhari, now we're having guns. Uh, look, keep this mm. for peacekeeping. Keep this to enforce law. Keep this to maintain law. Okay. You are the one stealing and selling. That's a double crime, double yeah. tragedy yeah. that must be uh, met with, uh, with proper law. Uh, kudos to the Nigerian army for fishing sure, them out. Sure. I believe if there are more within the system, we need to also uh, go after them to mop up and clean up uh, the system for better service delivery. Mr. Benjamin, as always, appreciate your invaluable contribution. Uh, to the analysis this morning. Thank you most kindly for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks again. Right. Okay. That's our show for you today. Thank you most kindly for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow, God willing, live at 8 a.m. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Good morning and thank you for watching Daybreak.